What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Civil the Civilization 5 AI only world battle with the historic spawn dates mod. We're going to go over the info addicts because I haven't gone over them in quite a while. So, population first. Persia, number one, 22 million people in Persia. Persia's doing pretty well for themselves. China in second. China really starting to kick on now. They've started taking Mongolian cities. India still in third, surprisingly, even though they've lost their capital, 13 million. Then the Aztecs dominating North America, 12 million. Korea also 12 million, just buying them in fifth. And Babylon in sixth with 11 million. Lowest population, well, let's have a quick look here. Venice, Germany, the Ottomans, Shoshone, Huns, Austria, and the Netherlands. All destroyed or not spawned in in the case of the Netherlands and the Ottomans. That leaves America with the lowest population in the entire world. Even Brazil, 1 million people. Brazil have finally settled, we'll show you in a minute. Crop yield, oh, well, we need to go up again. The Aztecs, number one. They're, they're doing very well, they're very big. Rome is in second, surprisingly. I think Rome is sort of the sneaky, could sneak into a definitely being one of the late game stronger sieves. Persia, especially being in Europe and not really near any of the other big ones, Persia, China, or the Aztecs. The Mayans in fourth and China in fifth, although pretty much joint with Assyria, just one ahead. Production, the Aztecs again, over a hundred ahead of Rome, again in second. Rome, very strong, I think, stronger than we think. Persia in third. Babylon 4th, China 5th, Assyria just around there again. GMP, economy wise, Aztecs 570, gold mil. I don't know how this works, but I used this one to review. I don't know how this is calculated or whatever, but this is how we're just going to look at who's got a better economy. India 2nd, China 3rd, Persia, then Rome. Babylon are also up there again. Land area, the Aztecs dominant as expected, over a million more square kilometres than Persia in 2nd. Then Rome, surprisingly, almost the same size as Persia. It doesn't look it on the map, but then when you, when Persia is so big, but then when you look at the um, African colonies of Rome, it looks a lot better. China and the Mayans there as well. Then Babylon, Assyria, Spain, and India are also doing pretty well there. Military manpower, Persia number one, only just ahead of Babylon, but with that tech advantage, you know they've got an air force now. Persia doing very well. Babylon in second. The Aztecs then in third. Obviously, they're a little bit behind in tech. China in 4th, but they're in a war with Mongolia. Rome in 5th, India up here, surprisingly. Morocco, France, Mongolia, surprisingly low. Because Mongolia weren't doing that bad. But, where are they? They're pretty low in the list. Anyway, social policies. Who is dominating? Persia, 28. India, 23. Assyria, 21. The Mayans, 19. China, 17. Happiness. Again, it doesn't matter who's really happy. It's who's... Rome only three happiness, that's not good, and the same with the Aztecs at six, Brazil only just started, so they're at six. That's not good news for Rome if they want to be expanding. Technologies, who's behind? The Iroquois and Brazil are both on 26, then that's a long way up before England, then the Zulu, 31-32, and that's still a big gap to Persia and the lead at 54, then India 51, China 50, Babylon 48, and then Polynesia and Korea 46. Rome are down a bit there. The Aztecs, as we see here, 11 behind Persia, so they, that's why their military manpower is probably not as good. Cities, the Aztecs have 20. Rome, 14. The Maya, 6. A very quick drop off. Spain, 5. Celts, 5. Who else? Russia's got 5. China's got 5. As has Assyria. Persia only has 4, surprisingly, and they're doing really well. Science, the Aztecs put in the most output, and the same for Rome. Both putting out a lot of science output, 420 from Rome there so that that's gonna mean that they're gonna catch up technologies much quicker then we have the Mayans and Persia Persia trying to keep their lead they're probably not gonna hold on for too long then China Babylon joint fifth sixth here uh, culture Persia dominating as you'd expect Assyria in second then the Mayans then Morocco India uh, culture wonders wonders Persia we know were dominating anyway this doesn't matter Faith gain is important-ish, the Celts on but we looked at religion, I think, in the last video. Other than that, not too much important. Tourism, Persia, 64. They may be doing well, actually, for a culture victory. We'll go have a look. Um, cultural. I know what. Wrong thing. Here we go. Okay, quickly, let's go ideology. So we've got the three powers, mainly. I, I guess they're not really the three powers, but these are the three sieves. 
three first sieves to get ideologies, and they've all gone differently. So Persia and autocracy, India with freedom, China with order. They're already unhappy because of this massive amount of tourism that Persia has. And look at that, Persia influential with 12 of the 35 sieves. So Persia, as more sieves get destroyed as well, they are going to be slowly getting much stronger, Persia. Okay, so now America, big news. America's got a settler going out, finally. Also, look who's here. Brazil finally joined the party. They are trapped, and they have a lot of great, great artists for some reason. They are pretty stuck. Maybe this settler might settle now. Who knows what's going to happen, but Brazil are finally here. I think we went over this last video, but the Aztecs are now in Australia, the first city in Australia. And as I was going over those info addicts, just wanted to remember how seeing the Zulu so low, well, it's worrying for me considering it looks like Rome may actually be able to hold on to this huge colony and that'd be insane if they could just sort of control all of Central Africa wow but oh Babylon here may actually be looking to get involved here and take maybe Babylon might be planning against somebody whether it's Ethiopia or Rome but anyway Rome has declared war on Byzantium don't think much will come from that Rome unless they get unless they get open borders through Assyria and into the Black Sea they should be okay and all through Greece it'll be very difficult Siam have joined in as well how are the French this is their chance they need to take out England now because if not they're not going to be able to grow the Celts are going to be stronger than them Denmark are stronger than them Rome are going to be stronger than them so are Spain Spain with a very big navy as well Tend to bear in mind, at least in the Atlantic, their navy's not so strong over here. Anyway, Carthage and Denmark v Byzantium. Oh, new ideology. And there we go, Babylon joining Persia with autocracy. So these two are going to be... Okay, there we go. So Byzantium's probably going to go. Assyria's the big one here who should help out the most. Carthage isn't going to help too much. Uh, Greece's help would probably come in handy as well, but Assyria should be able to get the job done. So there we go, Babylon and Persia, the two Middle Eastern sieves, I mean it's Syria here as well, but two strongest Middle Eastern sieves are both going autocracy and it looks like they're going to be friendly. Open borders here for Persia through both Assyria and Babylon. Oh, what's going on? Okay, I think the World, Cong what? World Congress, the World Congress is about to be founded, finally, since Brazil spawned. That is quite likely. That's why the game was frozen for a second. Oh, just wait for it. Nothing I can do. Or the game's going to crash, which would be even worse. But yeah, this is pretty big. I don't know what the Persians are doing, but they're sending quite a large military through Babylon. I don't know, maybe they're going for Greece or something. There we go. Carthage discovered everyone in the world first. What well on Carthage? Wait, who is this? Where are the Danish going? Are they going over here? I, I don't know, but Denmark, Carthage, so World's Congress. Let's see what was proposed. Nothing yet, okay. See, we have to, we might have to make a proposal, which is worrying. Because that always happens, god dang it. Sweden, ooh. Ooh, that is interesting. So right as it looked like Russia was starting to lose out to Poland here, although I don't think Poland would have done anything. Sweden join in. So, how well are the Swedish, they, uh, their navy, they've still got these older boats, the Galeas. Not sure that's going to be too helpful. But if they land in, luckily for Sweden, Poland don't have a coastal city that, like, other than Berlin, which they actually border. So that means Sweden could make quite a large landing of troops pretty easily along the north Polish coast whichever city they go for then I wouldn't know obviously Russia are still in that war Ooh, where are we looking at? 1909 okay so we're, we're slowly progressing it looks kind of 1909 a little bit further behind I guess in Europe and it's more sort of Persia instead of the Europeans who have got the Great War Infantry of course the World War One is about to start in two years wait no titanic was 1912 1914 was the war i got them confused somehow great war bomber there we go 
three of them for Persia. That's going to be a huge hand for Persia, like, especially if they went after someone like Siam, just having planes when no one else has them. How are Ethiopia doing? They're just sort of sitting here, not doing anything. They're pretty safe from the Zulu now that this city's actually gone. Should be pretty hard for the Zulu to have any more success. But the Ethiopians probably aren't happy that they're just sat here doing not much. Babylon have got a pretty large army out here in sort of Egypt. Egyptian lands. If you're wondering where Egypt are in this campaign, I'm spectating as Egypt. Just thought I'd point that out. In case anyone is new to this series, if you're new... Check out episode 1, there's a link to the whole playlist in the description. And you can also check out the other current campaign, which there may or may not be a link to the description, because I keep forgetting to put it in, for the single player campaign at the moment on the China Earth 2014 Civ 5 mod. So that's pretty fun. Anyway, are America going to settle up here in Canada? Oh, they're going to settle two cities. Why are you going out? Oh my god, where are they going? God dang it. <laughs> I don't know where they're going. They're probably going up here somewhere for this copper. Maybe the pearls as well. Maybe that's what they want. Luckily for America, looks like the Aztecs are... Uh, maybe they're going this way. I don't know what the Aztecs are doing, whether they're thinking about getting rid of the Iroquois or going for America. Obviously, we saw the Aztecs had low happiness, so where they want to get involved is some with wars at the moment is something pretty... will be interesting to see. But anyway, Polynesia has actually got some nape from frigates now. And that may me force the Aztecs' hand into building a larger navy in the Pacific. They've got some Galeases here, but these frigates would have more success. Eth Ooh. Ooh, that is a big war. Ethiopia via Syria, that is not so big. India via Syria, very big. Especially if it, they, they could if India grabbed these two northern cities. I'd Oh, what if India did well after losing their capital? Could you imagine? And they've got artillery as well, so they could very quickly take over this city. And I think they could have success with both these cities here from sort of Armenia and the Kuskus Mountains upwards, Crimea as well here, up to Attila's court. If they can take these, that would be huge because Assyria pretty much don't have much of a military anymore. They've, I don't know where it's gone, but it's pretty much destroyed. Wow, India, this is big for India. And as I said, the Swedish trying to land some troops. Oh, here we go. So the Aztecs. Wow, Aztecs. Joining Babylon and Persia with autocracy. It's pretty interesting. It looks like everyone's just going to go for autocracy because of that massive tourism. Bonus. Greece have peaced out with Assyria. There we go, Assyria straight away getting that peace deal that they need to survive from the Indian invasion. Ooh. Okay, so China's not going to matter, they're nowhere near, but that is a big bad news for Ethiopia. Zulu army may be coming up for them, they want to avoid the Romans, the Zulus, so fair play to them. Ooh, Carthage are fighting Greece down here. Okay. Well, I guess they've both got cities down here, so whatever. Morocco have been very quiet all campaign. Come on, do something. Invade Spain, do anything. Okay, so, big, this city is already in the red, and this rifleman is still alive, so presuming that Assyria have been already, Attila's court will fall to India next turn, and India are pretty safe, it's not like Assyria can fight through anywhere else, and Assyria don't have many land units, they have a few boats in the Black Sea, but I could see India taking at least two cities here. Probably not anymore, because the rest are in awkward positions, especially with Byzantium still alive, but... Wow, India. Good, good call. This opens up a lot for India. They could go after Babylon pretty much without consequence. So, wow, India. Really smart move. Especially since they are so long. Okay, so they did put this unit in the yellow, but it's not going to matter. Really smart move by India. And we didn't have to vote in the World's Congress. So Carthage want Greece embargoed, and Babylon want Mongolia embargoed. So is that Babylon saying we want China? Oh, and look at this. The siege of the Mongolian capital has begun, and there we go. Attila's court falls to India. This is a big move by India. We could see a strong India despite the loss of their capital. See their new capital all the way up here in the north. 
that's pretty safe from Mongolia because of these mountains, and they just they've got a big tech advantage over Russia, keeping them safe. And these two lakes will be helping. Wow, I wonder if they're going to keep pushing on for Nineveh here. Anyway, next big thing to keep our eyes on is what should be next turn, the fall of the Mongolian capital, which means India will have to worry a bit more about China because they'll soon have planes and they will be able to... I think China will probably be able to get through the had the problem that these mountains that caused Mongolia in the earlier war with India much easier. Although all this artillery from India, that's going to help out quite considerably. Any more Caribbean colonies? No, just the one from the Aztecs and the one from Spain. Or not colonies, cities, whatever. I don't know. How did this city... Oh yeah, everyone's starving. I was going to say, how did it lose so much? Okay, so there we have New York on this little island. I don't know what it's called. And Boston here in Canada. At least America actually settled. You know, credit to them. Look at the Celts trading with America. Good, good job for the Celts. Who are looking kind of strong. They failed to take out England. France need to take them out, like, so soon. Okay, India look like they are going to push in. Obviously, they're sending that artillery in first, drop the city into the red, and then let their heal, hopefully healed riflemen come through and take the city. That would be a huge pickup for India, and probably the end of Assyria, leaving them pretty spread out with what they have left. Surprised Assyria is holding on to what they have, and there we go. Kurakorum, the Mongolian capital, falling to the Chinese. Boom. Very strong China emerging in the east as the Celts peace out with the Songhai. This is getting interesting. There is one Mongolian city left. Looks like the Chinese are going to keep going. And once they're gone, that is, their only threat is Persia here. And Persia are more... Just have a few units here defending this border. All the Persian units are walking through Babylonian territory, so I don't know what they're doing. But Persia and China look like they're going to be the strongest too, with probably India and Babylon somewhat behind. Babylon already look like they're starting to fall behind, actually, from India, who are doing really, really well. And this looks like it's going to be the fall of Assyria, but at the same time, it looks like Denmark, who already have done some weird city-taking when they took Vienna, Looks like they're about to take Constantinople as well. So Denmark, Denmark are being very entertaining. I don't know. I don't know what their plan is. When they're going to get this French city, I don't know. But Vienna, like okay, and now Constantinople, possibly. They need help from other people though for that to happen. They're not going to be able to do it individually with one unit. And our China are going to keep pushing west. It's leaving the east kind of open for a Korean surprise attack. However, Korea very behind in tech. Pretty reliant on their turtle ships, which will not have much success against all these Chinese frigates in the sea here. The Aztecs, very dominant in North America, so we won't keep too much of an eye on them. The, end, the real interesting stuff going on right now is here in the Middle East... And Europe as well. Poland. More and more Swedish units now landing along the Polish Baltic coast. It's pretty interesting. I wonder if Denmark would be willing to get involved as they start to try and siege Berlin. And there we go. The Chinese pushing to eliminate Mongolia. Boom. Strong, awesome China. That's what we're going to see. How are Portugal doing? Portugal are... Portugal have had a rough time. Spain could probably put them out of their misery at some point soon. Anyway, Rome still quietly chugging along here, not getting into wars. China and Poland have peaced out. Whoa, okay, Morocco is fighting Portugal. I forgot about this Portuguese city, so this is going to be pretty big. Portugal, I don't even remember this city, but if Morocco take this... It's going to be a big blow to Portugal, who are going to be just banished back to their homeland. So. So, okay, this is it. Assyria have got a few units, but it's not going to be enough. But that, guys, is going to be it for this video. As always, if you have enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like, leave a comment, maybe even subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.